Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching in the world. Sean Driver, the Red Horde, and uh, let's start with the apology. Uh, it's Saturday. We are only seven hours away from kickoff, six hours away from kickoff, and I'm just starting to put this thing together now because it's just been that kind of thing. If you're new here and you haven't been here before, uh, welcome. What do I do? I put together three sorts of type of videos. The Watch Party, which will be on uh, in about six hours from now uh so join us for that also deandra who did an amazing job on sunday rave reviews she's going to be here on sunday with brendan of course running the controls uh the other two things we do whenever i get time uh hasn't been recently i do um hors d'oeuvre videos where I take a look at things that happen off the pitch and what happened on the pitch and get into that as well as the Who Are You series, which is exactly what this is. I'm going to just get into it and do it in one take and try to blast hold the entire through the entire thing. And so I guess the question is, Leighton Orient, you're coming up soon and... Uh Let's get into it. Leighton Orient, northeast part of London. We're going to be playing the Wyverns. I had them confused with the Red Dragon. It's not. That's uh, not Dragon versus Dragon. As far as a derby, it was corrected for me. And uh, well done for that one earlier. The Wyverns, half serpent, half snake. Uh, anyway, it's it's a thing. Um, still, the battle, the derby of the winged beasts. I don't know. I'm struggling. It's late at night. We'll get into it. Thanks for being here. Uh, I guess I can just jump right into the whole picture here and get into this. Leighton Orient, doing this in one take. Leighton Orient, uh, last season they finished 11th in the League One. Better than was expected. I know early on in the bookies and what I was seeing was they were expected to potentially be one of the teams that was coming down. They had themselves a successful team, uh, a, a successful year. Not a lot of turnover with this club. Just to take you through this, its name, the O's. Orient, by the way, uh, I had to look that up. It's a player who'd had a hand in the name Jack Deaning. Denning, Deaning, a uh, player back in the 1920s, uh, one of their best players apparently suggested that it be named Orient, uh, or that that be included. That was the name of the company for whom he worked with, Orient Steam Navigation Lines, which uh, ultimately was sold to Norwegian uh, and got into the cruise ship industry eventually. Uh, that's Leighton Orient. 1881, uh, the founding, founding time, it says population 14,184, obviously being in Northeast London, uh, a lot bigger than that. Uh, founded Fifth oldest in League One, 24th largest with the population. Our last match back in 2019, that would have been their promotion year, 2018-2019. Uh, championship year, 2018-2019 for Leighton Orient. Uh, turnover 5.9, so on the smaller-ish size. It's still surprising when you see that that's 18th overall of the 22 that I have um uh, financial records for. A couple of them don't have them. Profit loss, minus 3.9. So they run an efficient ship there. Uh, social media, 350,000. That makes it 10 times smaller than we are. Brisbane Road is the historical name. It goes all the way back into the 1890s, circa, when they started playing football there. Uh, a couple of years ago, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, Goggin Group? Uh, stadium for repurposes names. The 20th largest stadium that we will be attending to, or sorry, the 20th lar 20th longest trip that we'll end up taking through. I'll go through that in just a moment. Away allocation, 1,500. Capacity, only 9,271. I do find their stadium, and we'll show the picture. You can kind of see it in the graphic in the middle of the page there, that Leighton Orient sign that stands above the east stand there. The away fans sit on the south side of that. The home fans on the north side of that. And it's off-center. You can see in the picture it's not near the middle of the, or well it's close to the middle of the pitch but it's just off center to the left still curious as, as to whether that's because of the extension why they didn't just move it over uh it's an interesting little quirky feature to have hey look at our centerpiece off center but i'm being picky and facetious 88 percent capacity last year uh their attendance 8116 that would put them 15th out of the teams that are in league one this year uh, the pitch dimensions wide divergence this one one of the lar larger one seventh largest uh 8360 square yards jump into the season statistics with this one maybe i want to take you through the windows first i'll come back to the season stats let's do this a little bit inverse rather than go through the season stats you maybe see why in a minute but to start with 
with where we normally are. Uh, that's the trip, four hours and four minutes, four hours and 30 minutes, depending on traffic and the route that you take to swing on over into Northeast London and get to the Goggin Group Stadium. I'm just going to call it Brisbane Road. Uh, it's the historical name. There is the picture of it. You can see what I was talking about, the Leighton Orient about being off center there. Uh, and the away fans will be sitting further away from camera uh, on that left st left hand side of the stadium. Their kit, I hate their kit. Puma, you did Leighton Orient dirty. What's with the suspenders? You'll see them, uh, I guess, tomorrow. Uh, you'll see them uh, in the pictures of a couple of players that I'm going to feature as we go through these. But I just think these are tacky as all hell. Uh, the away, you've got some swirls. Great. You've got a third. I will say I do like the Memorial jersey. That goes back to the Battle of the Somme. And for Canadians, uh, we have a lot of history with that one. We had the Royal Newfoundland Regiment that was basically wiped out uh, at the start of the, that battle in World War One. Uh, 350,000 UK soldiers lost their lives in that one, 25,000 Canadians. Uh, we were largely called in through the 2nd Canadian Infantry and the 4th Canadian Infantry um, in addition to the Nova Scotia Regiment and Newfoundland, not part of Canada then, uh, fought for the UK um, and fought for England um, in, in that one. And so I'm all for a memorial that remembers the Battle of the Somme because uh, one of the bloody, bloodiest um, battles during the World War One. Um, yeah, a travesty and um, the memorial, well done to Orient for that. So no complaints about that kit. The V, I like it. Everything else, I, uh, junk. Um, Nigel Travis is the owner. Um, I'm gonna, do I have a picture of him? I don't. Uh, Nigel Travis, and this is from his Wikipedia page and I've already gone through it myself. So I'll just, uh, born in England, but cut his teeth as it were in the UK, but largely as a CEO, of Blockbuster, Papa John's, uh, Dunkin' Donuts and those sorts of things. So uh, history of doing that. Here's their track record. Their high watermark, 1960-61, uh, when they finished second in the uh, in Tier 2. So started Tier 2, Tier 3, battling through there, and then since then uh, and into the 70s, it's basically been a struggle through Tier 3 and Tier 4 with just that blip out of the EFL. Richie Wellens, uh, there he is. Uh, an interesting person because and we'll go through the stats and this is why I did this first as I want to bring you to a quote he is the antithesis the uh, uh, the yin to the yang of Parky Parky likes a little bit of long ball in his game uh, but I'm getting away from it a little bit since the middle half of last year, year but he likes his long ball this man doesn't in 2019 uh, when he was coaching elsewhere he's had history at Salford City Donc Doncaster and others but here's his quote already highlighted if you're a long ball team or just go to defend you might win one game because you put bodies on the line the opposition have missed chances on the goalkeeper has made some great saves but you cannot work long term like that look at the best teams in the country this is a guy and i just found this quote afterwards i saw Leighton play peterborough and they're a team that likes to build up through the middle of the pitch they have uh, two guys in the middle that are quite capable they do a, a great job galbraith and i'll get to him looked exceptional in that game uh and, and very dangerous Leighton, a surprisingly good team for where they sit in the table and it's obvious as to why they don't play through the wings they're weak uh on the wings it's it's all about the middle of the pitch for them and that's how wellens has them playing he said it as much there so we can expect that it'll be interesting to see because that has been our kryptonite we also have had answers for it it really depends on the the, the skill and the quality of the people in the middle of the pitch but they have the weaponry and the formation and the intention to do exactly what Wrexham struggled to deal with. So that's something to consider. So let's jump into this. I'm not going to correct the dra graphic. I updated this before the game on Tuesday where they played Peterborough. Uh, they drew. 2-1-4 and four is Leighton's Orient, not 2-0-4. and four. I have the 2-2 two, two draw there, but I didn't update it uh, entirely. So it's stuck there. They have seven points, not six. Uh, they had that draw there. When you go through, I did update the goals for and against. I just didn't update the, sc the, the score. So the, everything else is, is legit. That one off. 14 goals for for us, leading the league. 
Uh, six goals against. Uh, we're up near the top of the table. Goal differential, the whole nine yards. So we'll take that sitting there at eight. That's the best that there is, and really, it's just burning them with us. And then there's a long fall and drop down to four. So we're we're running hot, as it were, as far as goal differential, which is a nice little tiebreaker to have. Um, goals four away. Uh, we just have the three that ties us for fourteenth. Uh, goals against away. We're th- we have three that's tied for fifth. So we're not doing bad away, but we play low scoring, scrappy games is the expectation. One win, one draw, one loss. For them, uh, not scoring a lot, nine goals. I guess that puts them middle of the table. That's fine. Goals against, they allow a lot. 11, that's tied for 17th, and there are a bunch of teams tied, uh, to be fair, uh, sitting on that 11 already. Uh, Their goals for at home, four, that's tied them for 10th, and their goals goals against at home, that's six, to put them at tied for 19th. And I got it right with their schedule there. Zero wins, one draw two losses. Clicking on then to the next part of the table and this is where you can see the long ball isn't their way that they play. Uh, Accurate long balls, they sit 21st, we sit 6th. Uh, you look at their accurate passes, we're largely even. Possession game, not really a possession team. I think that this may be because of quality. It may be because of style where they run everything through the middle and they, because of that they have interceptions, tactics, and things go the other way. But they're, uh, they're a team that where what they do well is they score when they have opportunities, 38%. Um, they didn't in the last game against Peterborough. They had a lot of chances. They were swarming. There were tons of shots. Uh, they just didn't get anything through the back of the net and xg hates them 5.4 uh despite the fact that that's how they play i think it's just a combination of the the possession and shots sort of from anywhere in the middle of the pitch is they they swarm and so ogonkwo may be busy we'll have to see how he answers to that uh as you go through accurate crosses again 14th they don't really play through the wings they're accurate long balls they don't play long so that's who they are a familiar face as the referee Sonny Gill. Why is he familiar? Because he was there April 13th in the FJR game where we won 6 nothing, and we all know what happened there, right? So uh, don't have to get into that. He's had three games in League One, uh, three goals per game. As far as him with the cards, uh, the third game that he did didn't get updated, and I've tried to check on it, and it, it, it was delayed. So this is only with uh, two of the three games being identified. But tied for second in red cards... Uh, because he's given one out. Uh, Tied for sixth in penalties, because he's given those out. Yellow cards, he's sitting 14th out of the 38 referees used to date. So a guy who's not afraid to control with the use of the card and could get involved in this one. Uh, I kind of hope he doesn't, but we will see what happens there. And so where does that leave us? It leaves us sort of to go through the players and what to expect here. Um, There's the players, Charlie Kelman. Uh, I didn't bring up the chart and talk about their honors. Uh, I did mention one, 2018-2019 National League Champions, 2022-2023, the League 2 Champions. So they went up with trophies both times they went up. Uh, wanted to get into the players, the middle of their pitch, as I said, they've, they have the one forward up front. That's Charlie Kelman. Uh, traditionally, uh, he's played 99.7% of their minutes. He's got three goals, 19 shots, 12 shots on target. Uh, not a lot uh, in the conversion rate, 0.25, but he's going to be the guy who's going to see a lot of ball uh, in this one. And who's he going to get it from? Uh, it's going to be from Ethan Galbraith. I was exceptionally impressed with this guy. Uh, very impressed. He's six, he's from Salford City last year. He is through the Manchester United Com- uh, Academy, 23 years of age and from Northern Ireland. And so six matches, six starts, 534 minutes. He's already got three goals and an assist, and he fed ball to Kelman the entire time. The two of them played quite well together the whole time. So whether that's EOC, could it be Scar? I don't know. Uh, We'll see what happens. I actually would like Scar. This is going to be a game where you're going to want to have that control in him and Dobson. I think arguably could be better at that because EOC's game, very good with the aerials, very good positionally, but I'm a little bit suspect when the ball's on the floor still with him compared to most, and certainly far better than I will ever be. But that's just my one criticism of him. So Ethan and uh, Kellen, I suspect, to do that. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Kelman, born in Basildon, England, but he did play for the United States, uh, U19 or U17, U20. Uh, he played a number of games, 19 I think he had for the U20s, uh, if I recall correctly. So that's his connection and why he's got a US flag by his name, uh, Galbraith, Northern Irish. Uh, and then Tom James, 
I, I raise him obviously because Cardiff Welsh, uh, he hasn't played for the national team. He had a couple, a cup of coffee with the youth uh, back in the day. I say that because he's 28. Uh, he's been with Leighton for a while and he's only drawn in for five matches, four starts and 51.3% of the game. But he led the, the team really defensively in the previous game. Not only, I mean, he scored a goal. The one goal came in the, against Peterborough. But he defensively he was sound on that right side with the four in the back the middle of their back line potentially a little bit suspect but tom had his thing and the last one to speak of joshua keely and i have to bring him up because this is a weakness this is one of the things that we've run into recently is wrexham has had bad keepers uh and when i say bad keepers i'm not saying because i'm relying on anyone's stat i'm just comparing their goals against uh to other teams around them and other keepers around them and they've been in the bottom four or five each time so we've been on a run of of poor goalkeeping and uh, i would say that that's the issue here uh 54.5 percent save percentage 1.57 goals against per 90 uh a little bit leaky the young man has been uh coming over from tottenham after a loan on, at barnet We'll see if they maybe change it up, but that's that's the weakness. Is they're going to be difficult in the middle of the pitch? Um, then it gets weaker as you get towards their back line, and then ultimately you have Keeley. So if we're able to swarm as we traditionally do, there could be some some issues here. Which is why, um, and I'll pause here before I get to the why. The subscribe button's down below. If you haven't hit it, go ahead and hit it because you've been listening the entire time. That means it's not bad right and come hit that get the notifications come and join the watch parties it's late at night i need to go to bed anyway the why i compare on all of these videos the teams that that, that rexham is playing to uk foods and i've gone through uh, a number of them so far and when it comes to late orient i'm going to call them uh, jammy dodgers and for those of you in North America who don't know what a jammy dodger is, it's uh, we have I don't even know what we call them here, but I think when I describe it, that's the uh, the cookies that you have that have the jam center in the middle of them, and that's the delicious part is in the middle of the, of everything in you, everything else you just sort of ignore it. It exists to be there, and you try to get through it to get to the delicious part that's in the middle. And uh, I guess what I'm saying in sort of weird way is Kelman and Galbraith are the delicious part of Late Orient awkward um and the rest of it you just kind of have to go through it there you go the analogy um we are here in five hours i've got to edit this because i made a bunch of mistakes uh because it's late and i'm tired and but i'm looking forward to the, this one uh come and join us for the watch party we've got 55 different countries represented we have a whole host of people we have a good time doing a wonderful little community that continues to grow and i'm excited to be there so thanks for taking this one in i apologize for it being late uh sean driver the red horde putting this together get it out and i'll see you in a couple of hours bye